let's have some fun with fractals. To start with, what are fractals? You've probably seen tons of fractals in nature, but you just did not know that they are fractals. One example is the fern in this image. Here's what a whole fern looks like. Now if we zoom into one leaf, look, it looks like the whole fern. Now let's zoom in even more, and look at this, it looks like the fern again. Some flowers are also fractal. At first sight, if we see this bunch of flowers, we can see that the bunch is made up of many small flowers. But actually, if you look closer, each of the small flowers is made up of even smaller portions. Just the same way that each portion makes up the small flowers, each small flower also makes up the whole bunch. So each of these smaller portions is in fact similar to each of the flowers and even to the bunch. This is also an example of a fractal pattern. Another fractal is a broccoli. And don't we all really love broccoli? As you can see, each of the heads of the broccoli resembles the vegetable as a whole. Now that you've seen these examples of fractals, you can probably spot your next fractal in nature by yourself. So what exactly are fractals? The word fractals comes from the Latin verb to break. Fractals are geometric patterns in which every smaller part of the structure is similar to the whole. How do we actually create a fractal? Let's first look at the Sierpinski triangle. It does look complicated, but we can create this in a few simple steps. Let's start with the black triangle. We can mark the center of each side of the triangle and connect the dots to make a new upside-down triangle. We then remove this triangle and are left with three smaller black triangles instead of one. We take the centers of each of the three new triangles and again connect the dots to make three new upside-down triangles. Let's remove the upside-down triangle at the top. Look, we get three new triangles instead of the one at the top. We can now remove the one at the bottom left and finally the one at the bottom right. You'll notice that each time we remove an upside down triangle, we get three new black triangles. So now we have a total of nine even smaller black triangles. Let's see the triangles that we will remove in the next step. Now we can again take the top part of the big triangle and remove the upside down triangles. We can continue on to the bottom left and then the bottom right. We already have 27 black triangles. If we keep going, we can make more and more black triangles at each step. And if we keep doing this forever, we'll have an infinite number of triangles, and all inside the one big triangle we started with. Let's have another example. This one is called the von Koch curve, named after the Swedish mathematician who came up with it. This time we start with a line and divide it into three. We mark these points, then take out the middle. We take a line of equal length to the one we just removed and put it at an angle of 60 degrees. We can now connect the two lines and this line happens to be equal in length to the line we just removed. So instead of one middle line, we have two new ones of the same length, making the curve longer. And notice that instead of one line segment, we now have four line segments. Now take each of these four new lines, divide them into three and take out the middle from each of them. Starting from the left, let's put in two new lines instead of the middles. You'll see that each of these lines is equal to the length of the ones we just removed, which means that the length of the curve increased again. We already have 16 line segments to work with. Let's take each of these and repeat the same steps. It's starting to look pretty. You can see that at every step, each time we add segments, we make the curve longer. If we keep repeating the steps, we make the curve longer and longer. Since we can keep repeating this forever, the length of the curve becomes infinite. This is what makes fractals special. Now we can move on to a more complicated and more beautiful structure, the Mandelbrot set. As we can see if we zoom in, we recognize the original structure again. If we zoom in again, we again recognize the same structure as the original image. This keeps happening as we zoom in again and again, and at each step, the image retains its beauty as well. In this video, we saw the beauty of fractals. We showed you how to recognize them in nature and even how to create some simple fractals. We hope you had some fun with fractals.